So if the name the Sherman Brothers doesn't jump right out at you, you probably do know who they are and just don't realize it. The level of and how prolific they were in the amount of music they made is almost unparalleled. They started out, uh, one wanted to be a writer, one wanted to compose symphonies, and they got challenged by their dad to write a song, and the next thing you know, they are literally the Disney songwriters of, from the 50s on up until, you know, probably Richard's passing here recently. Uh, we feel them, we know their music from so many Disney movies, Parent Trap. I mean, I'll list it here in front of you. It's too many to even go on. Jungle Book, they redid those. So all these Disney movies, if, if there's a Disney song, you'll probably see Sherman Brothers listed right below it. One of the great things they did though was they also wrote a lot of music that ended up in park rides. And so there's several places here at Disney World in Florida where you can enjoy some of the Sherman Brothers music. And we're gonna go see the one here at Epcot that has their mark all over it. And let me be frank, I love the song. It's not my favorite ride. There are better rides that I like better. A lot of walls. But let's run over to Journey to Imagination, go see our pal Figment, and hear a little bit of what Richard and Robert Sherman have given us and will continue to give us here in Disney World. One of my favorite things about the Sherman Brothers is the words they made up. Uh, Figment, of course, comes from... Cleaning the old rifles again? I'm going hunting. Hunting? Hunting what? The kudu buck that is roaming freely on this estate. And don't tell me it's a figment of my imagination. Figments don't eat rare tropical flowers. If you listen to some of the other songs, Substitutionary Locomotion, they took these songs and made them into something really incredible in these words. Most famous probably being super califragilistic. Oh, look, monorail going right over us. Gosh, I love that. Uh, super califragilistic, expialidocious, which of course, I mean, if you, unless you're living under a rock, you probably don't know. But these words they made up that just made me so happy. Uh, Sword in the Stone, one of my favorites. But here, we're gonna go hear one little spark. Hello, on your tour, you'll see how the five human senses can help capture your imagination. Oh, oh, can I go too? Absolutely not. This is one of our discoveries, the figment of imagination. For every sound, your ears are hearing. So there you go. Little Sherman Brothers keeping us happy no matter where we go. Here at the Magic Kingdom. No, here at Epcot. Sometimes I'm an idiot. I think all the time I'm an idiot. And I don't know, maybe I do like that ride. Maybe it's growing on me. It might be a little tired. It could use a little refresh maybe, but in a, in a good way. And again, I keep complaining about the nostalgia disappearing, and, and then here I am complaining about something that's very nostalgic. So, from here, we're gonna head to Disney Hollywood, formerly MGM Studios, and see if we can find the Sherman Brothers handprint. I'm not even sure it's there. I may cut this out. Or I may leave it in just to show you my mistakes. I like mistakes. That's how I learn. But, uh, I was watching The Boys, which if you've not seen and are interested, is a great but tragic story about the Sherman Brothers and their relationship. It's a little sad and a little happy, um, but uh, in there I saw them putting their handprints down as older gentlemen, and I feel like it might have been at 
uh, the Chinese theater in Disney Hollywood. So gonna go over there, take a look, see if we can find it. Let's go. All right, I'm gonna look over here real quick. I'm in Disney Hollywood. And I think the only place to really find much of the Sherman Brothers is gonna be over here in the ground. And I'm gonna look real fast because we're heading over to see and see if I can find their handprints here. I feel like I saw them putting them in, but I could be wrong. I could be absolutely wrong. I may have to ask. I feel like it was right by Julie Andrews. But Midler, Mickey, Tony Curtis, Roger Rabbit. I'm just looking for the Sherman Brothers. And it may have been them really doing it at Gorman's Chinese Theater. I could be wrong. But I was hoping that they'd done it here. Otherwise, we'll have to wait till tomorrow. All right, I'm gonna ask a cast member because the guys are waiting on me. So that guy didn't know. So I'm gonna Google a little map, and if I'm wrong, then maybe there is no Sharon Bodes in Hollywood, other than music playing at rides and things like that, which certainly pops up. But I might have been at the actual Chinese theater in LA. But I was hoping they'd done it here. I'll let you know shortly. So, at Magic Kingdom, at our first Sherman Brothers stop, Winnie the Pooh. They wrote this song, I'm not even sure they wanted to write it, although I heard Ra Richard Sherman, Robert Sherman, say that it saved his life because he was a chubby kid. So that music, uh, obviously they wrote the theme song for that. What did I watch last night? Oh, I was watching uh, The Misadventures of Merlin Jones, and they wrote that song. Um, but here, you know, you've got the Winnie the Pooh music, so you've got Richard Robert Sherman writing those songs. I tried yesterday, after I left everyone at Hollywood, to go and look for a list, and I looked up, um, I found an article by Jim Corcus, uh, who did not list the Sherman Brothers as having done handprints there. So if he didn't uh, say that, God rest his soul, um, then it doesn't exist. Which, by the way, pro tip, if you're interested in learning about the parks and history and Disney history, look up Jim Corcus's books. They're incredible. He's probably the smartest Disney person I've ever, ever known. All right, uh, next stop, perhaps, Carousel of Progress. I don't know what the copyright laws are, but if you can hear in the background, it's Heffalumps and Woozles, which is a trademark Sherman Brothers. Let's make up some words. Almost Dr. Seuss level of making up words and people and things. Gosh, I love the Sherman Brothers. I miss them. I'm not sure I want to live in the world without them. All right, I swung by Winnie the Pooh earlier to show some Sherman Brothers, but now, now is the time, now is the best time to, uh, to go back. So we're gonna make a quick circle. I think I'm gonna start with Carousel of Progress, go from there to Small World. Ooh, look, monorail. Can't have too much monorail, right? Gosh, I love that thing. So cool. So heading over to Carousel first, and then swing around to Small World, and then finish up at the Tiki Room, which is not exactly the order if I had to put these uh, attractions, sorry, in, in order that I love. I think I would go Carousel first, Tiki second, though a close second, and Small World third. I love them all. I don't have a hate it right we were talking about that earlier i like everything let's go see some sherman brothers starting with carousel so i wouldn't be surprised if we heard some some pretty good sherman brothers tunes walking down main street because their music is so ubiquitous and i'm sure there's different versions of things that have been put together to work like that so just thought I'd throw a little walking in here in case it's fascinating let's cut through Tomorrowland Terrace I haven't done that in a while as we head over to Carousel of Progress so as we head into Tomorrowland, I just found a little cheat for Sherman Brothers. I can hop on uh, hop on the old uh, 
TTA, people movers, I call it. Because on that ride, there is a line where he says, oh, excuse me, now is the time. Now is the best time, which was the original line for, no, second song, right? Is that correct? I may have to look at that again. But I think the Sherman Brothers wrote the song for Carousel of Progress and then it got for the World's Fair and then I think it got changed to uh, Great Big Beautiful Tomorrow for the park. All of this could be wrong and if it is I'll put it below. Um, and then it switched back. I like both songs. I think they're both pretty spectacular. And they still reference now as the time quite a bit. So the Carousel of Progress is one of my favorite attractions. Uh, it is a, a must-do every time we're here. Um, made for the 1964 World's Fair, Walt's fingerprints are all over it. I know a lot of people use it as a place to cool down, but it really is a neat, neat attraction that takes us through the development of electricity and progress from, gosh, I'm not sure what era it starts in, pre-electricity, hello, thank you, to sort of now. The last scene's a little dated, but who cares? It's awesome, right? So without further ado, let Sherman, Sherman brother it up. For 20 some odd years ago, you know that pilot fellow, Charles Lindbergh? He's about to fly a single wing airplane all the way across the Atlantic. <laughs> He's never going to make it. You know, I predict the day when millions of people will learn Latin and Greek sitting in front of their TV sets. There's a great big Just a dream away! Thank you for joining us on Walt Disney's Carousel of Progress. We hope you've enjoyed this tribute to the 1964 Carousel of Progress from the New York World's Fair. Please gather all of your personal belongings and exit to the doors located never disappointing although i did notice something i've never noticed before that they are uh when she's in the rump this room uh she's putting up wallpaper but he made her a paint mixer not sure how that works out all right let's see what uh what the old tta looks like and uh maybe we can hop on that and not technically super Sherman-y, if, if that's a word. But, uh, hey, we're here. Get a little peek. And if not, we'll come back in the dark, because it's beautiful at night. All right, change of plans. Scrapping that, because it's, uh, they're not loading it. Looks like it might have some technical difficulties, which happens. Little Walt Disney tip. Expect difficulties and uh, we gotta roll with the punches, guys. It's a complicated spot. I'm amazed. It's like luggage on an airline. I can't believe my luggage ever shows up. I know people are furious when it doesn't, and I get it. I totally understand it. Me, half empty, half full. I'm just glad there's something in the glass. So I just realized. They're closing that off for fireworks, probably. So, to get around the small word, we're gonna have to go the long way. Past 7D, through Fantasyland, and then uh, and then from there, I think I can make my way over to Tiki 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 Room, which I love. So here we are. It's a small world. Also 1964 World's Fair. The Sherman Brothers really, really did some pretty amazing hitting it out of the park with these songs. Walt had asked for a song for this that you could do easily in any language and uh, and then repeat it over and over again. So uh, they would sing it in a round. And I think originally it was uh, 
it was kind of a cacophony of sounds um, that didn't work. And so that's why it ended up all being in English. I think originally he'd wanted them to all sing it in their own language, uh, which would be cool. But the song was, I think, called, I'll put it down below, like maybe a, a world of giving or children for giving. So really neat ride. Uh, again, another 64 World's Fair. So rising up, the Tiki Room, also a must do for me and the family. I just love it. I love the music. I love the theme. I want my house to look like this. We just found a little tiki bar at home. The Sherman Brothers wrote the song for this and originally it was supposed to be a restaurant. And in California, they still have plates where the coffee service would have been and the plates would have gone. As I understand it, the uh, Sherman Brothers were asked to come into a room and they had, a, had this all set up and Walt said, but I don't really know what it's about. And the Sherman Brothers sat down and and wrote a song for it and really got the whole tiki feel right. And it's an incredible song and an incredible ride. And one we do every single time. I just love it. But that, that kind of, as far as I know, winds up the Sherman Brothers in the park. I think that's everything that they've done. Again, you probably find them in little places here and there, but, and I'll list somewhere in here all the songs they wrote, maybe right here. But the Sherman Brothers really have become an integral part of our lives. Um, I mean, the songs that we sing in this list that we do all the time, and it's just, it's a little darker world without them in it. And uh, I wish I could play some of the music, but I don't understand copyright laws on YouTube yet. So I'll leave you with that. Thanks for watching. God rest the Sherman Brothers. God bless them for, for Mary Poppins and all this music that makes us Disney fans happy. So if you enjoyed this, let me know. Let me know how I did on a little like uh, a little historical dive. Not real well researched. Maybe I'll add some stuff in. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just keep it the way it is. But thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Tell your friends if, if you think it's interesting. And if you don't, uh, lie to them until it's horrible. Maybe they'll watch it for that. So thanks. Have a great evening and a really big day tomorrow.